When we last left you, this system did not have a GPU, and we're gonna fix that right now. This is NVIDIA's new RTX 3080. This is MSI's Gaming X Trio version of the RTX 3080. We're gonna install it in our system today, run some performance benchmarks, take a closer look at this card in the upcoming video. Make your next build epic with PNY's new Accelerate Gaming Epic X RGB memory. Available in 8 and 16 gigabyte DIMMs and 8, 16, or 32 gig kits, you can easily configure what fits your system's needs. The matte black heat spreader and vivid RGB lighting are a classic combination for both looks and performance, and PNY's lifetime warranty gives you one less thing to worry about. Check out the link below or head to PNY.com to learn more. So for those of you who are new here or maybe just missed my last video, this is the Threadripper 3970X editing system that we built last week on the channel that almost burned my house down. It's rocking 128 gigs of RAM and Asus Strix TRX40 eGaming motherboard, Lee and Lee Unifans, a full custom loop and cables by Ensourced. It's got the absolute works. Well, it's except it's got no graphics card, and we're gonna fix that today by slotting in the MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio. The 3080 Gaming X Trio is MSI's highest end 3080 and one of the most substantial GPUs I've ever handled. It's also got one of the highest rated boost clocks out of all the RTX 3080s on the market at 1815 megahertz, and that might be in large part due to the fact that it draws power from not one, not two, but three eight pin PCIe power connectors. MSI quotes 340 watts as power consumption on this card, and I can verify that is indeed true, as looping units in heaven resulted in power draw fluctuating between 330 and 350 watts for the duration of the test. I also hit it with a quick and dirty overclock of plus 50 megahertz on the core and plus 1100 megahertz on the memory, and this resulted in sustained clock speeds around 1950 megahertz and temps leveling off at 70C in the enclosed case. This is a very acceptable number and one that's likely to drop even into the 60s with a mild tweak to the fan curve. Keep in mind, however, that small form factor enthusiasts need not apply here. The Gaming X Trio measures a stout 323 millimeters long and occupies a full three slots. It also weighs an impressive 1.56 kilograms or about three and a half pounds. So imagine my surprise when I first installed it in the case and saw little to no GPU sag with just one screw holding it in place. You can point to the new anti-bending strap that MSI has built into the structure of the tri frozer cooler as the reason for this. And even though the card does come with a full-length GPU support bracket, you may not actually need it. The backplate of the Gaming X Trio is surprisingly not made of aluminum. Rather, MSI chose to go with graphene here instead. It's lightweight and strong and provides some measure of passive cooling. Integrated into the backplate is a six inch long addressable RGB LED strip that speaks to MSI's Dragon Center software and provides some nice additional outward facing illumination. The front side of the card sports three of their new Torx Fan 4.0. Like all 3080s, you get 10 gigs of GDDR6X memory here and I found my setup to be highly overclockable, but just like with all GPU reviews, your specific card may be different, so your mileage may vary. The GPU core, on the other hand, didn't have much wiggle room as far as overclockable clocking and it was often power limited in my testing which i hope can be solved with a modified v bios at some time in the future when installed the 3080 provides support for up to four displays via three displayport 1.4a and one hdmi 2.1 so connectivity shouldn't be a concern i hooked up my custom 8x3 power cables from insourced customs and my editing system lit up like a christmas tree which of course isn't to everybody's taste, but I enjoy it, and as with all RGB effects, just turn them off if that's what you prefer. I decided to run some comparison tests between this new build and my outgoing daily driver, which features a 3960X and a 2080Ti. Clearly, obsolete hardware. The first thing I did was render out a video I published on the channel a few weeks ago, a full 15 minute 4K video project. There wasn't much difference here, with the old system exporting it in 5 minutes and 9 seconds, and the new build taking just 8 seconds less at 5 minutes and 1 second. An improvement, but nothing to write home about. Next up was everyone's favorite competitive benchmarking program, Time Spy Extreme. We saw quite the jump here, owing both to the 3080's brute strength as well as increasing our CPU cores from 24 to 32. The new result of 9575 with no overclock to either component is impressive. Maybe the only result that bummed me out a bit was Far Cry New Dawn. We went from an average frame rate at 4K Ultra of 51 down to 41, and the most likely explanation for this is that Far Cry is CPU bound 
and does prefer higher clock speeds instead of the more cores offered by our 3970X. The rest of my gaming testing was nothing short of monumentally impressive. I've now tested a few RTX 3080s, so the performance leap over the RTX 2000 series Turing cards isn't necessarily unexpected anymore, but damn it if it isn't still awesome to see. To summarize, I tried out several titles using all three commonly found APIs, that's DX11, DX12, and Vulkan, and every game I played saw improvements somewhere in the 20-25% to range at 4K and max settings. Shadow of the Tomb Raider went from 67 FPS to 88 FPS, highly impressive for this title and with even more room for improvement by turning on DLSS. Doom Eternal has highly volatile frame rates depending on map and what's happening on screen, but overall I saw a jump from the 90 to 110 FPS range all the way up to 140 to 180 on Ultra Nightmare settings. Deus Ex Mankind Divided not only saw an average frame rate improvement from 54 to 67, but also a significant gain in minimum frame rate, which is important when hovering around that 60 FPS number. The same thing happened in Ghost Recon Wildlands, the most difficult test in my benchmarking suite, where minimums went from 40 to 50 and averages also increased from 47 to 57. I could basically go on all day talking about how awesome it is to be able to both work and game on a system like this, but to be honest, I've been thinking a lot about it and I understand that it's an absolute privilege to be able to make videos for you guys like this. I definitely think that it does provide a service to my audience, even if at the current time it's almost impossible to actually purchase an RTX 3080. This information will still be relevant in a week or two or three when the cards finally start trickling back into stock, and maybe this time will allow people more opportunity to read or watch multiple reviews and decide which card is actually the best for them instead of just rushing out on launch day and purchasing whichever one happens to be available. Until then though, I'll continue to pump out the videos for you guys on this new editing system. And I hope this information is useful to you either now or at some point in the future. So what do you guys think of the MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio or just 3080s in general? Sound off down in the comments below and don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week with another new video.